Welcome to Skills to Pay the Bills and part two of our special segment, Strategic Talks Roundtable Series. Today we are going to continue to demystify incorrect stories about global exporting for women, veterans, and minorities. Our two panelists have been on our show before at separate times and we are delighted to have them return to talk about the concept of exporting. We also welcome to the show our small business focus group. Our first panelist is the president and CEO of AMSCO Global, which stands for American Merchandise Supply Company. He launched his export business in 2011, exporting major American brands all over the world. AMSCO was also the recipient of the Small Business Exporter of the Year Award in 2013 from the U.S. Small Business Administration. Our next distinguished panel is from the Small Business Administration serving as Regional Manager, Office of International Trade, Export Solutions, Mid-Atlantic Region, covering D.C., Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, and Delaware, Northern Virginia Export Assistance Center. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to our show Mr. Vincent Palenthago, Mr. William Bill Hulk, and our Small Business Focus Group to Strategic Talks. Hello again. Hi, dear. Thank you. Welcome back. Thanks for having us. <laughs> Good. Well, we have a lot to cover, so I'm going to get right into it. Bill, I want you to take the lead on okay. talking to us about the, um, the nine points of that okay. uh, important questionnaire and well, why it is so important. Sure. Well, I've, I, from the last segment, if people recall, we, we, we talked about a, a export assessment uh, test that they, they really need to take, um, and I encourage uh, you know, to take it again uh, <laughs> to yes, find out where you are. Um, the, one of the best resources, other than, you know, SBA has a wonderful website, mm -hmm. but for exporting, probably the first place people need to go is export.gov. Okay. Um, I have it up here on the, um, on the monitor. Uh, and I think for everybody uh, uh, in the, uh, uh, on the, the panel here and also out there uh, watching, the, probably the first place you're going to go to is, is the begin exporting. There are all kinds of things that are available on uh, this section of the website. Uh, it, you can uh, help, <clears throat> you can find a place to uh, build a uh, business plan. But as we talked about before, you, you said there was a, you know, conceptually there was, there, there's exporting, mm -hmm. but there really, it really is about uh, the business part of exporting. And so to do some soul searching to find out where a company really is, they should do this nine question assessment. Um, this is, you know, very simple. It's very straightforward, and it gives you a score at the at, at when you complete all uh, or answer all nine questions. It gives you a score as where where you are. Um, you know, critical um, you know critical questions are you know management buy-in. If management is is kind of giving you a sideline project to looking at exporting, but they don't really have buy-in. Mm -hmm you're probably not going to have the, the, the backing of management to take you truly into exporting. Do you have the financial wherewithal to, um, to export? Meaning that you may be eating up 80% of your financial capacity in servicing your domestic. Where are you going to come up with the capital? You know, do you have sufficient internal cash to service an export business? Um, do you have the capacity to um, provide the same service of your, on your product or service mm -hmm. that you provide here in the United States? Do you have the capability of, of providing the same type of warranty or the same type of service, um, customer service internationally? So those are examples of some of those questions. And the more no's you say or you answer, <clears throat> the lower the score. And I, I would think that if you're scoring 50% or less, it's, you really need to go back and look at your business plan again. Mm -hmm. um, and focus on those areas where you've said no. But uh, again, it's, a, it's just a real good eye opener. It's, it's a soul searching type of uh, questionnaire that uh, gets companies on track. And, I, and I'm sure there are a couple in there that you may need to refine you know, you know, based on your goal. business. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't right. know if you did. Well, that was going to be my question to, to uh, Vincent. How would you score this questionnaire as an exporter? What do you think about this questionnaire? Um, seriously, I haven't done this uh, initially mm -hmm. because as I told you, I mean, I was starting the business, uh, you know, because of some inquiries that came and we started because we already know what we're going to be doing. So it will be definitely an uh, eye opener for me also to go and see where I stand at this point and I'm going to do that. Okay, very yep. good. 
Very good. That's good. So we're going to um, open it up now to questions uh, from our uh, focus group. So, all right, ready. Who wants to be first? Donna, you look like you have something you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Let's start with you. <laughs> uh, I just have a question. Um, well, and I guess a point that I want to bring out um, and clarify. So when my sister got laid off from her job, she decided she was going to go start a, a business. And she was saying that she could actually take her retirement account and use it to start up the business without having to deal with the tax penalties. And I wanted to ask if you guys, you know, counsel people on that or talk about that and because a lot of individuals probably don't know that yeah. they can do that without getting penalized sure. with accessing their retirement account. Yeah. Obviously, I, you know, SBA, myself, SBA, you know, the people in SCORE may be accountants, they may be CPAs, and they're in a position to provide tax counseling. Um, that specific example, I would say they need to talk with a, with a tax professional to get that type of advice. Um, certainly, a bank is going to look at all sources when you're starting a company. Uh, you don't have a whole lot of cash, but you've got some assets other, other, in other areas. They're going, to, they're going to look at those assets, both personal and business assets, as collateral. So certainly they could use a 401k uh, distribution or as a, you know, pledging that, th those assets as collateral for a loan. There, there may be tax mm -hmm. benefits or, or lack of, of penalties when you're doing that. I couldn't you know, specifically address that. But yes, I mean, you can use pretty much anything uh, that, that's liquid and also like fixed assets, real estate, what have you, mm. um, to, um, to start a business. So really, you know, your own personal cash, that first year, that first year and a half, um, it's yourself, friends, families, and, and fool. And I mean, fools. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, you, you've, got, you've, got to, you've got to have your own skin in the game. There's no free money out there. Um, you, might, you might come up with a great app and somebody throws a bunch of money at you, but you know, that's like hitting the lottery. But you've probably put in you know, several years of, of gray matter equity in, into, that, into that type of uh, um, activity, so. Okay. Mm -hmm. mm, I have a yes. question. Yeah. I want to just know, I'm so curious to know if you have any special plan for women who are gonna start their own business for the expert? Uh, uh, Women-owned business? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, not really. You're, you're going to start a business, a woman's going to start a business just like a, a man, you're going to come up with a business plan. Mm -hmm. So unless your business is more um, associated with uh, the type of product where it, it may be more of a woman's use than you have more expertise in that area, you're going to start a business just like you would anybody else. Mm -hmm. um, as, far as, as far as financing, funding, we don't discriminate as far as our loan guarantee programs. Um, so it's, it's, it, it really depends on, on the business plan. That's, that's, that's the big, but we do have, we do have the Women's Business Council, which right. are there to help in, you know, it, it, it's a different type of support than, you know, you don't see a, you don't see a specific business council for men. There, you know, there are issues in, in which they can address for starting a, a woman-owned business. See, in women-owned businesses, we're not having a mandate for the agencies to give certain percentage to women-owned businesses compared to 8A and all that. But I heard that they are actually looking into having some mandates, you know, for agencies. Okay, certain percentage of business has to go to women-owned. I don't know where, where they stand at this point, but uh, well, certainly in contracting, government contracting. Government if, contracting. If you're going to be a government contractor, so a woman-owned, minority-owned, you are going to, and particularly if you're a veteran. So mm -hmm. if you're a woman, mm -hmm. you're a minority, and you're a veteran, you're going right to the top of the list for a government contract. Mm -hmm. So there are certainly advantages under government contracting. And if you go to our website and look under government contracting, when you speak to our, let's say, if you're in, the, uh, in this area, you would talk to the DC district office, mm -hmm. they would have a person that would coach you specifically on woman-owned uh, businesses that are going into government contracting. What about veterans? Uh, yes, veterans as well. Thing? Same, okay. same thing. Okay. Yes, okay. we have a program called Boots the Business. Oh, okay. And oh, that right. is a program where we coach veterans in how to uh, get their businesses off the ground. Boots the business. Okay. Other questions? Uh, is there any initiative for companies that's looking for export, like doing the business in a national level, but not uh, other countries? Is there any initiative for? taking part in events or doing some research to find out which countries they can export their services? Um, going to the U.S. Commercial Service again, they have both inbound trade missions, 
They have trade shows with, uh, throughout the United States, and what they'll do is they'll actually target companies in specific countries, bring them to the United States to do matchmaking, to pr pr provide um, opportunities for, the, for U.S. companies to meet um, prospects here, right here in the United States. Um, a company like yourself, you're foreign owned, you started a branch here in the United States. Coming up, there, we're calling it Select USA Summit, and that's specifically for direct investment into the United States to help find opportunities in particular, you know, in communities all over the country, to find business opportunities here in the United States. So you can, as you guys did, you mm -hmm. opened up a branch here. Um, so there are all kinds of programs. We, could, you know, we, we need a lot more time mm -hmm. to kind of go over those, but there are all kinds of programs to find opportunities both here in the United States and outside the United States. Um, and we're going to work together to give you that time Great. to to really go over everything because I know it's a lot. Yeah. Um, right before we're going to break in just a little bit, but Benton, I'm just wondering if you could quickly uh, talk about the hot uh, items that you think uh, are out there for exporting. From my experience, um, we are mostly into engineering equipment, spare parts, building materials, oil and gas type products. Mm -hmm. See. We know, I mean, I have had questions, I mean, for people who doesn't really understand the American, uh, you know, products, really. Okay. People ask, yeah. okay, what do we really export? You know, we have everything in U.S. is made in China, so how do you yeah. export anything from U.S.? <laughs> so, but at the same time, what people forget is, when it comes to oil and gas and, you know, heavy industries, mm -hmm. American products have played a key role in really doing this uh, oil explorations and that type of activity okay. in the Middle East. And we kind of had a lot of uh, um, monopoly, you know, in, in some areas. Yeah. I mean, there, is stiff there was stiff competition from Europe always, but now the competition is you now increasing to China and India also. They are more local and they understand the culture better. So, okay. so basically, American products in the, uh, in the engineering and and, and, and we manufacture things that people can't even, you know, imagine, okay. you know, in, in America. Mm -hmm. um, so these products have market markets out there. All right, very you know, good. So. We can come back to that if yeah. you have more to say. But right now, we're going to take a short break. We'll be right back with our special guests, Bill Hulk, Vincent Palazzo, and our small business focus group. So don't touch that. Welcome back. Prior to the break, we were discussing some of the hot um, uh, items that are, are available for exporting, and Vincent was giving us his um, take on that. Uh, Bill, what about you? What, would, what do you say about that, some of the hot items? Well, and, um, in this area, uh, in the, the Brookings Institute, in conjunction with J.P. Morgan, have done an extensive uh, city by city study of where where uh, exports are concentrated. So there's a if you go to the um, Brookings Institute uh, webpage, you can you can find some of the results of this study. Um, in this area, um, cybersecurity mm -hmm. services, uh, transportation services, um, the Census Bureau also provides uh, export data, but that's per, that's only for the shipment of products. Mm -hmm. um, but this is predominantly service-oriented environment, the, 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 the mid-Atlantic. Um, so again, transportation, cybersecurity, IT security, healthcare, secure, uh, healthcare, healthcare technology, uh, services are, are becoming um, a critical export. You say services. Can you uh, any type more? of services, oh, really? IT, like cyber cybersecurity okay. services, uh, healthcare IT services. Human um, resources? Uh, Herman resources, Human resources. Uh, business coaching. Um, oh, okay. you know, um, an interesting, there is a, and I'm trying to think it was, it may have been J.P. Morgan who had come out, no, it was a Goldman. But anyway, they came out with a very interesting graph that over the next 15 years, the middle class globally is going to increase two, 300%. As middle class grows globally, the, the need for services. So as, as people can afford more health care, as people can afford more things, they need more services to, to, um, to um, fulfill the, the increased need. So 
they're probably not going to go to China. They're probably not going to go to Russia. They may go to India. They may go to some, I, but they're going to come to the United States to, for that IT type of services, engineering services, et cetera. So um, that's where we have a, a, a big focus here. Agricultural, soybeans, uh, wine, uh, spirits, mm -hmm. uh, forest products, but predominantly it's the service sector in, in the mid-Atlantic that's, that's exporting. Okay, very good. Questions? More questions? Well, I'll ask one. Um, I know one of the services that seem to be growing in need is financial services because you have a lot of baby boomers, financial planning, mm -hmm. getting ready to retire mm -hmm. and et cetera. But I don't usually think of that as a service to export. But you mentioned business coaching, so now I'm kind of wondering is if, but the, each culture plans differently. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, they have different retirement systems, so I would think that would be something harder to export. All right. Well, if, let's, let's say that a company is looking to start a business in the United States. Mm -hmm. And if you are uh, able to guide them on, um, uh, on all the different em employment issues, insurance, uh, establishing investment programs, et cetera, those, you, you, may be, you may be providing, providing that guidance here through documentation, having it converted into a different language, and sending it over there for them to make that decision. But you're billing them for your time. That's an export. Although you're doing it here, you're billing somebody overseas. Um, insurance is another thing. If you're an insurance provider, uh, SBA couldn't support that. Mm -hmm. but, but if you're providing any type of service where you're billing an overseas customer, that's an export. Hmm. Okay. okay, that's good to know. Other so the questions? insurance sector in India is opening up now. It used to be only 27% foreign participation. Now it's becoming 49% uh, starting recently. Okay. So a lot of services, uh, American insurance companies are going to be, have an interest in doing business in India, so. Okay. That's very interesting. Yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't think that was the case. Yeah. That's very interesting. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Uh, I'd just like to know uh, the experience in, from the U.S. is usually in the uh, European or the Middle East, the most of the experience from the U.S.? Um, well, this area, the Middle East is a, is a, is a big, uh, big export partner. Um, Canada and Mexico are probably some of the largest export partners, along with China. Europe is obviously a big, um, a big partner. Um, so it's, it's, it's relatively diverse, but you know, Europe, Mexico, Canada um, are probably the, the, the biggest nationally. Okay. Dave, I know you got a burning question over there. <laughs> <laughs> well, mine is uh, when uh, somebody wants to start a business and but you need credit, just like when you're young and you need a credit card. How, how do uh, a company, how do they get credit? Um, all depends on, on, on their, where they are in their, in their life. I mean, if, if they own a home and there's equity, that's your biggest source of capital right there is borrowing, borrowing against your home. Um, it, it all, it's all about collateral. I mean, uh, it, it, you know, if you have personal assets, if you've got other people that can pledge or guarantee, um, it, it's all about the collateral. Mm -hmm. um, the, a bank wants to see something that they can fall back on if payments stop, but it comes down to collateral and cash flow. If you've got a spouse who has a very good income and you've got a lot of discretionary cash, and they see that so that if you're going to borrow $100,000 to start a business and there's no problem with that additional uh, with that income to service that $100,000 note. That, so it, it really comes down to cash flow and collateral. Thank you. You know, I have a question. We, we've talked a lot about uh, a lot of the positive things about exporting, but are there cautions? Are there things that, you know, like landmines, that, you know, we need to be careful of? Start. Absolutely, yes. Um, we have uh, payment issues that comes up from time to time. As I told you, in the Middle East, you know, a lot of people come start companies in the free zones. So it's very easy for them to fall, show up, and you know, go back to their homes, and so then we had to go behind them to collect the money and all that. So when you start initially, you will think like, okay, there is a company there, there is a company here. So it's kind of a, a straight match. They have a requirement for an engineering product, mm -hmm. and what are they going to use it for? So you supply by giving them credit, but then 30 days pass, 60 days pass, you don't get the money. Mm -hmm. Then you start realizing what's going on. You know, so there are definitely that that caution that you have to have. 
and there are export insurance plans from Ex Exim Bank and all that, and maybe Bill can mm -hmm. you know, talk about it a little bit here. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is definitely risks involved. So does that come under Bill? Does that come under like uh, fraud and abuse, or, or well, is, is um, any of that happening? I mean, in this area with um, with IT and technical type services, software, things like that. Um, one one big thing you have to worry about is your in intellectual property protection. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure that somebody's not going to pirate your product or your service, but particularly in countries like um, no. in China and other areas, you want to make sure that you protect yourself. So you, you can work with uh, the um, office of the uh, uh, U.S. Patent and Trade Office. They have free legal counsel to help you in protecting your your IP. Um, you need to understand your market. You need to work. You need to un really understand who you're selling to. Um, you, you don't. You want to make sure that that um, your labeling is is correct. Uh, a great example is years ago. Um, you know, General Motors went to Mexico, mm -hmm. and they were going to market the Nova. Well, they didn't realize that in Span parts of you know the certain dialects of Spanish, Nova meant no go. So oh, obviously they didn't yeah. want to buy any Novas. Yeah. So um, so you have to understand your labeling to make sure that it it, it fits your. So it, you really have to understand the market you're getting into. Um, you want to start out uh, slow. You don't want to jump into a market, particularly on credit. You know, cash in advance, letters of credit. Understand all the different terms. So it, it's again building that business plan and really understanding what you're doing. So again, it sounds like um, taking the steps, like starting out with the. Uh, SBA resource partners and then moving mm -hmm. to some of the other programs that are designed to help uh, exporters not to step on those la landmines to be able to correct you know, kind of go around right that you want to you want to plan so you can anticipate those landmines and then you can mitigate the risks associated uh, with those landmines okay all right um, Vincent as an exporter what has been one of your most pleasant experiences about this business? Well, that's a, a very interesting question. Um, you know, when, when you talk about uh, world uh, balance of trade situations, I was always, uh, you know, I mean, this was like, you know, in the 90s when I came, you hear this that, you know, the Americans are importing a lot and they're not exporting, uh, you know, enough. So I was not, never thinking that I'm going to be, you know, I mean, exporting at, at some point in my life when I was a student here. But you start exporting and you see that, okay, you know, overall American exports are now increasing and getting better. I know a few millions we do is nothing compared to like what the whole country is doing. But still it's a good feeling that you're contributing to that growth. So exports are increasing now. Mm -hmm. So that's a great feeling, and especially when I got the award and all that from SBA. Right. Yeah. But, uh, but they're also knowing that there's so much more opportunity. Exactly, there. yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you can go to different parts of the world you're not going to get stagnant in any particular. And how about how about margins? Do you find that if you were to sell something here in the states and then sell it overseas, that you're going to experience a, a better margin? That that you're going to maybe a little bit more profitable? We are. We, we, we I can't compare the the local okay. sales because we are 100% mm -hmm. exports okay. as well as right. our business is concerned. Right. But margins we actually play according to their needs and their you know I mean okay. or the risk we are taking or you know th things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, we go with you know reasonable margins when you know it's all advanced payment and everything. But if you're taking a bigger risk, you know we we think of margins in a in a, in a different way. Right. So it's it's all depends on the situation. I mean it's not like a standard that okay. we can uh, establish. Right. If it's an LC and if the money is guaranteed. I mean, and our, our cost to money is only this much we know. So if you get a reasonable amount and it's a big order, we take it, you know, so. That's great. Questions? Mm. Yes. Uh, I want to know if uh, you said well, for having a credit, you have to have something like own a home or something like that. Or uh, some asset. Yeah. Uh, if somebody just moved to U.S. and have a experience and have a home in their own country, does that count too, or no? It have to be exactly in the U.S. Um, you could get creative. Um, your bank here, you may be working with a bank here in the states that have, has a correspondent relationship with, let's say, uh, Deutsche Bank or what have you in, in let's say, in Germany uh, or wherever. Uh, that bank, your bank, may hold your mortgage. Mm -hmm. There may be a way they can work together in coming up with uh, using your equity overseas. Uh, that you're probably going to work with an international bank here in the states to be able to do that, uh, but really, it, it, a, a bank here to get credit, you're going to need some type of collateral, some type of asset here that they can that you can pledge mm -hmm. to do that. 
Um, so more like it's going to be it's going to be a monetary type of, of collateral, uh, securities, investments, uh, cash, that 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 type of thing. So yeah, I have heard stories uh, from a friend of mine who moved from Australia. He had a house there. He moved here. He started a business. So he had equity in that house. So he liquidated. I mean, he took the money from that and he moved money here. You know, to to finances. Uh, you know, he had the property there, so he used that to his advantage. Well, when you're having fun, <laughs> time goes by really fast. <laughs> I want to take this time to thank Vincent and Bill for sharing uh, all the valuable information with us and a very special thanks to the focus group for the insight. And you guys had really excellent questions. I appreciate that. Uh, and again, I now have a better understanding of uh, exporting and I agree with Bill that you know, we didn't have enough time. You know, we need to, it's so exhaustive. You know, we need to we take We could do a, little, a series of these. Right, we can do a series. We need to take them little, you know, sure. maybe one topic at a time right. and spend the time to go through it. Uh, and I thank our audience for the support uh, that you have given Skills to Pay the Bills over the past two years. Uh, I want to wish you uh, a very wonderful day, and we will meet you here again next week for another segment of Skills to Pay the Bills.